was Jesus not the son of God but the Bible says after his resurrection Jesus was declared the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the spirit Jesus Christ that means there were different stages in Jesus' life he was born as a son by a woman but he was declared as a son with power after resurrection and the Bible calls him the first begotten of the dead the one who was born again from death the first begotten that's Jesus in Acts 13 he said that when after Jesus was raised from the dead concerning what David wrote in the second psalm he said that thou art my son this day have I begotten thee. somebody say the rebirth Jesus was the first to be born again and it happened after death so what does it mean for one to be born again it's for one to come back to life from death that's being born again and all these scriptures declare of Jesus that he's the first begotten the first to be born again from death he is declared the son of God by the resurrection from death so there was a death that happened to you then a rebirth which part of you died your spirit and the Bible says that anytime somebody confess Jesus that he is the Lord and personal, is his Lord and personal Savior. The Bible says such a person should be baptized in water as a sign that he is crucified with Jesus and has resurrected with Jesus. There are many people, I have been working out for evangelism and I ask, do you go to church? Yes, I go to church. Okay, what does it mean to be born again? The person is standing before you looking at your face. I said, God, which kind of Christians are being produced in this generation? You've been to church for a while, you don't know what it means to be born again. I ask people, what is the gospel? They don't know you don't need to know the gospel to be a pastor you need to know it to remain in authority as a child of God you need to have understanding into your the rebirth experience to walk the God life that God has prepared for you it's not pastors that must know this you must know pastors must only open your eyes to it you must know you must know that you are dead of an old spirit an old nature if a man be in Christ he is a new creation all things are passed away behold all things are new it's one thing happening listen the things of the spirit works by consciousness it's one thing happening and another thing you capturing it by your conscience that I'm dead and gone so they talk about family cases you shout I'm dead they talk about the disasters of hell coming upon the earth you said I'm dead to them that's why Galatians 2 20 Apostle Paul would declare loud and clear that I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live I'm dead to what you used to know me for nevertheless I'm born again but you see somebody will live here right now and come and say my problems referring to what he used to be that's why you have to stop everything and begin to work on your mind and working on your mind is not reading novels. Working on your mind is not listening to motivational speakers. Working on your mind is staying into the gospel. Understanding it to the core. What it, re it, it represents in your life. And then you begin to work on yourself. You are born from the dead. You are born from the dead. Something about me you knew before I got saved is dead. You cannot still be claiming you are born again. And still we can see trace of the past. That is where the whole journey begins. Life begins from death in this New Testament experience. The evidence that you have the life of God is the report of death around you. That is why nobody approached the Holy of Holies without a blood. And when Adam sinned and God wanted to reach out to Adam to show Adam that this is the tree of life. This is life. When you take it, you will live but the condition is that you must pass through the fire and the life so the bible said the lord brought a flaming sword around the tree of life you can go for it but adam you have to die first so our greatest testimony of being christians is not only life our greatest is death the fact that we die so the life of god will find expression somebody shout i'm dead i'm dead to covid 19 i'm dead to every disease i'm dead 
I'm dead to the corruption of this world. I'm dead to sin. Apostle Paul will tell you that you people should know that you are already dead to sin. He said, how can who, those who are dead to sin still live unto it? What can you do to a dead man that will affect him? That's your greatest testimony for being a child of God. You died to something that people are living for. Something that is destroying people. Something that is making people helpless in life. You died. In the kingdom, one of the powerful testimonies is death. That is why the part of Jesus that will save you is his death and resurrection. It's death and life that works together as our testimony. If there is no element of blood around you, you don't have a testimony. Again, can I hear a voice say, I'm dead. I'm dead. Yeah. We must find many dead things around you. If you say Jesus is around you. You are too alive to your old spirit. When a person becomes born again, there are about four different encounters you are going to have that will guide you in your journey till you walk out of your body and apostle peter calls it the tabernacle it's a temple you walk out of it and then steps into the reality of the four tastes you were having on earth apostle paul said that our spirit strives with our flesh it fights with our flesh because this mortality must give way to immortality. So he said the spirit, the immortality in us keep fighting. Asking mortality to step out so he can experience the reality of the life that it has been bestowed on him. But the only limitation is this flesh. Mortality. For we know that if our earthly house, somebody say earthly house, of this tabernacle were dissolved, so he calls this earthly house a tabernacle, a temple. He said, for we know that if it were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. That's your spirit. He said, it's a building made, not made of hands, it's made of God. He said, we have it. The only thing that is blocking us is that this eternal, this flesh and physical tabernacle have not yet been dissolved so captured into it is that divine and eternal tabernacle of god which is your new spirit for in this we groan endlessly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven we groan so you see somebody's prayer a christian like you's prayer was to be groaning so that this mortal body will be dissolved so that the one that is prepared for him for the bible says that mortality will take on immortality he said that so that it will be dissolved that the one that has been built shall be clothed upon us i pray that the lord will change your desires that you begin to go for that which has eternal value if so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked you know what it means it is only that body that celestial body that will let you live that pure life that god is looking for this body keeps on exposing you so sometimes you go up with the spirit then you rise up one day in this body something happens through this body and you are exposed Apostle Paul said the only time we will be fully clothed in righteousness and in holiness is when we encounter that eternal heavenly body. He said this is why we groan. It's our prayer. So somebody was praying that you would die quick. That's what it means. Somebody had been praying that you would die quick so you will encounter what is there inside. If your eyes is only on the outside, you can't walk in such a realm. Your prayer will be a house in cantonments. But those that see into the eternal realms know that there is a better house inside. There's a better house. Oh, I groan also. I said I groan also. I groan also that I'll have an encounter with a house that remains in heaven. That I will never be naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, 
but close upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life so he said at a point in time we are groaning my first groaning is that this house will be dissolved so i can come into contact with the heavenly house but he said i've been thinking about it now we can change the groaning and this will be the burning and the groaning that we will not be on clothes that means i don't need to die to see the reality of that divine house he said this time my groaning is that mortality was being clothed upon mortality will be swallowed up by immortality that means the life that is inside will overcome this body he said now that is what i groan for is i don't need to die again but there is a way that what is inside will come out and swallow what is outside so that i'm a man like you but i don't live like you i'm a man like you but i don't think like you I'm a man like you, but my experiences are different than you. I pray that may somebody step into that realm. I said, may somebody step into this realm. In the name of the Lord Jesus, step into the realm where immortality will swallow up. Mortality. So it's possible that some people will be walking about mortals like you. But their experiences are in the realm of the immortals. That is why I was Paul. This same man say talking. This same man talking will come out and say that I know a man 14 years ago. That means this experience I'm about to tell you, I got it for a long time, 14 years ago when I got born again. So it is not today's experience. Today's experience is more higher. But this experience is long time. He said that I will not have you ignorant. I want to touch on visions. And if I touch on visions, you will know my kind of vision. It's not a dream. He said, I know a man, whether out of the body or in the body, I know not. That means it was a, a translation experience. He said, he went to the third heavens and he saw things that this mouth cannot see. So he's a mortal like you. But he got into a realm and began to see things that he can't tell another mortal. He said, the mouth can speak it. It's beyond mouth. And how did he get there? He said, because I groom. Hata. Calabrata. I don't groan for money. I groan for experience. Sakataya. Skuto barai. Lakatande lehasa. Until the rebirth takes over the flesh. I groan. No wonder a snake will bite him and he can't die. Kalefe peleskiva mortality have been swallowed up with life he can't die he said i stayed in the deep a day and a night i still came out i can't die anyhow because i'm not operating by this flesh the new creator spirit has taken over you have an option that's why we have we have the three kinds we have the natural man we have the carnal man and we have the spiritual man. The natural man is the one who have not experienced the rebirth. The carnal man is the man who have experienced the rebirth, but the flesh is in control of the newly created spirit. And the spiritual man is the one whose flesh is dead. So the spirit, even mortality and the flesh has been captured by that life. It is when the spirit swallow up mortality that things start to come. So Jesus will begin to command things and it starts working. Why? Because the heavenly house has swallowed up the earthly tabernacle. He said, now he that has wrought us for the, same, the self same thing is God who also has given unto us the earnest of the spirit so it is the groaning through the ministry of the spirit that you don't have to be, have this body dissolved but the newly created spirit begins to find expression that is why god is not angry with you when you are a believer and you are still fornicating he's not angry because you don't understand this and you are not practicing this if you are not practicing this sir 
the flesh will detect and God understands that's why the Bible says that the spirit lasted after the flesh and the flesh lasted after the spirit so that what you want to do you cannot do so the greatest battle in your life is not the battle against poverty the greatest battle is the battle between your newly created spirit and your flesh that's Galatians chapter 5 verse 17 that's the battle you are fighting now it's the greatest war the spirit lasts it wars after the flesh there is nothing about your flesh that the spirit likes it's so new to the, the newly created spirit for the flesh lasted against the spirit and the spirit lasted against the flesh these are contrary the one to another so that you cannot do the things you want one must swallow another and apostle paul said that by the groanings and by the ministry of the spirit your newly created spirit can swallow up the flesh so that you begin to experience what you should have seen in heaven here on it so actually the holy spirit's responsibility is to give you every taste of how heaven looks like here on earth if you get to heaven and you are surprised it means your relationship with the holy spirit was not strong enough that's why Apostle Paul said that by the Spirit we are swallowed up. If the Bible said we will never be sick, there will be no tears. The reason why the Holy Spirit is here is to give you a foretaste of that. So you see, Christianity is not just going to church every morning. It's a full experience of something that the Lord has prepared for us and he's saying that I give you my Spirit. By him, let mortality be swallowed up with life. That you will be on earth, but your life will showcase how eternity will look like to the whole world. This is us, church. There is no devil in eternity. So we too, we live our lives like there is no devil existing. That's why the Holy Spirit was given to you. We live our lives as though there is, there is no calamity on earth. He says the Lord will be the son. There will be no sun there. The Lord will be the sun. What does it mean? That means that it's possible that God can be your light here on earth. And David, David without the Holy Spirit, caught a, a little of it. The Lord is my light and my salvation. He was, he was talking about the experience of the new Jerusalem. That's how it is. In the new Jerusalem, God will be the light. There will be no sun. These are realities. This is why you are born again. And can you imagine that your only job is to groan in expectation that immortality totally takes over so you don't have time for gossip you don't have time for certain things because something must take over something the spirit must war and overcome the flesh i don't have time for for fighting and offenses there's a battle happening within me like a sasa there is a spirit that wants to break out something is caging him he wants to break out and his only hope is my groaning master and sometimes if we we are not groaning enough then all creation begins to groan for all creation groaned in endless expectation for the manifestation so when we are not groaning enough then the world begins to groan where are the church but the church that must be groaning to manifest does not even know who they are too many poor people around waiting for the billionaires that will arise from the church they are groaning till life captures our mortality so that nothing becomes a limitation anymore that's who we are you are too dead to be limited by sin you are too dead to sin to fall for it again it's not part of our negotiation unfortunately some of us have been swallowed by the world and our spirit is crying to break out but it is swallowed by the flesh so you are even in church but you are running to go and watch football the flesh has caged the spirit Someone may be sitting in church testing a girl. Where, where can we meet? The flesh has caged the spirit. But when the spirit cages the flesh, 
even when we share the grace you go and sit on the altar lakataba i groan i groan i groan 